Dear viewers, greetings. In this video, we are going to see about differential centrifugation. The contents of this video includes introduction about differential centrifugation, principle of differential centrifugation, steps of differential centrifugation, applications of differential centrifugation, advantages of differential centrifugation, and limitations of differential centrifugation differential centrifugation differential centrifugation is also called the differential velocity method it is a type of centrifugation process in which components are separately settled down a centrifuge tube by applying a series of increasing centrifugal force differential centrifugation is a commonly used technique in cell biology and biochemistry to separate cellular components based on their size, shape, and density. Differential centrifugation was first introduced by Bensley and Hoare in the year 1934, who obtained a large granule fraction containing nuclei and mitochondria. The principle behind differential centrifugation involves subjecting a sample to a series of increasing centrifugal forces allowing different components to settle at different rates. Differential centrifugation is a common procedure in microbiology and cytology useful to separate certain organelles for further analysis of specific parts of cells. In the differential centrifugation, a tissue sample is first homogenized, generalized to break the cell membrane and mix up the cell contents. The homogenate is then subjected to repeated centrifugation, each time removing the plate and increasing the centrifugal force. Principle of differential centrifugation. Differential centrifugation is based upon the differences in the sedimentation rate of biological particles of different size and density. As the increasing centrifugal force is applied, initial sedimentation of the larger molecules takes place. Further, particles settle down depending upon the speed and time of the individual centrifugation steps and the density and relative size of the particles. The largest class of particles forms a pellet on the bottom of the centrifuge tubes, leaving a smaller sized structure within the supernatant. Thus, larger molecules sediments quickly at the lower centrifugal forces, whereas the smaller molecules takes longer time and higher forces. In the case of particles that are less dense than the medium, the particles will float instead of settling. Steps of differential centrifugation. Step one is sample homogenization. The sample solution, which may contain cells, organelles, or other biological particles, is homogenized in a buffer medium. The buffer helps to maintain the stability and integrity of the sample during the centrifugation process. Step two is initial centrifugation. The homogenized sample is placed in a centrifuge tube and subjected to centrifugation at a specific centrifugal force, duration, and temperature. This initial centrifugation step is designed to separate the largest and densest particle from the rest of this sample. The step three is pellet formation. As a result of the initial centrifugation, the larger and denser particles sediment and form a pellet at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. The pellet contains the separated particles while the supernatant which is the liquid portion above the pellet contains the remaining particles. Step 4 is supernatant transfer. The supernatant which contains smaller particles and components is carefully transferred to a new centrifuge tube. This allows for further separation and isolation of specific particles in subsequent steps. This step 5 is repeat centrifugation. The transferred supernatant is subjected to 
another round of centrifugation but at a different centrifugal force, duration and temperature. This step is aimed at separating the next fraction of particles based on their size and density differences. Step 6 is pellet collection. After each centrifugation step, a new pellet forms at the bottom of the tube and the supernatant is once again collected. This process is repeated for multiple times with each subsequent centrifugation step separating particles of decreasing size and density. Step 7 is particle identification. Once all the desired separations have been performed, the collected pellets and supernatant fractions can be further analyzed. The separated particles can be identified through various methods such as biochemical assay, microscopy or specific staining techniques that target unique indicators or markers of the specific particles of interest. Applications of differential centrifugation. The first application is organelle and membrane separation. One of the primary application of differential centrifugation is the separation of cell organelles and cellular membranes. By adjusting the centrifugal force and duration, different organelles such as mitochondria, lysosomes, peroxisomes and endoplasmic reticulum can be isolated. This allows for the study of their structure, function and biochemical properties. The second application is nucleus separation. While not providing high resolution separation, differential centrifugation can be employed for the low resolution separation of the nucleus. This allows for the isolation of nuclear components and the study of nuclear processes. The third application is purification of extracts. Differential centrifugation is useful for the purification of biological extracts containing larger sized impurities. By removing the larger particles or debris through successive centrifugation steps, the target molecules or components of interest can be obtained in a more purified form. The fourth application is subcellular fractionation. The technique enables the fractionation of complex mixes into distinct subcellular fraction based on their size and density differences. This facilitates the study of specific cellular comp compartments and their associated functions. The fifth application is enzyme and protein studies. Differential centrifugation can be applied to separate enzymes and proteins based on their subcellular localization. By isolating specific organelles or subcellular fractions, researchers can investigate the distribution, activity and regulation of enzymes and proteins with different cellular compartments. The sixth application is purification of proteins. Differential centrifugation can be used to separate proteins based on their size and shape and allowing researchers to purify specific proteins for further study. The seventh application is diagnostic applications. In clinical laboratories, Differential centrifugation is used for the separation and isolation of specific components in body fluids such as blood or urine. This enables the detection and analysis of disease related markers, cell types or infectious agents. The eighth application is separation of viruses and bacteria. Differential centrifugation can be used to separate viruses and bacteria from other components of a mixture such as cells or tissues. The final and ninth application is analyzing the composition of samples. Differential centrifugation can be used to analyze the composition of a sample such as the types and proportions of different cell types or organelles present. Advantages of differential centrifugation the first advantage is efficiency. 
Differential centrifugation is a fast and efficient way to separate different components of a biological sample. It can be used to isolate specific cell types, organelles or other subcellular structures from complex mixtures. The second advantage is high throughput. Differential centrifugation can be used to process large volume of samples very quickly, making it a useful technique in high throughput studies. Third advantage is versatility. Different centrifugation can be used to separate a wide range of biological components including cells, organelles, proteins and nucleic acids. The fourth advantage is reliability. Differential centrifugation is a reliable method for separating biological components as it is based on physical characteristics that are relatively stable and do not depend on biochemical or genetic changes in the sample. The final and fifth advantage is cost effective. Differential centrifugation is a relatively inexpensive method for separating the biological components, especially when compared to more complex techniques such as chromatography or electrophoresis. Limitations of differential centrifugation. The first limitation is limited resolution. Differential centrifugation can only separate the components based on their size, density and shape. It may not be able to distinguish between compartments that are very similar in these physical characteristics. The second limitation is damage to cells or organelles. The high levels of centrifugal force used in differential centrifugation can cause damage to delicate cells or organelles which may affect their viability or function. The third limitation is contamination. Differential centrifugation can result in contamination of the separated components with other materials which are present in the sample. For example, if the sample contains bacteria, they may be present in the final preparation of the separated component. The fourth limitation is difficulty in handling large volumes. Differential centrifugation requires the use of a centrifuge which can be difficult to operate with large volumes of sample. The fifth and final limitation is time consuming. Differential centrifugation can be a time consuming process especially if multiple rounds of centrifugation are required to obtain a pure preparation of the desired component. Dear viewers, that's all about the differential centrifugation. Thank you for your support. Thank you.